here on News You Can Use. So let me get started with that. Uh, three topics tonight. First one, Brandy so eloquently uh, laid uh, at my feet there, and it has to do with the problem that we're having with the ports and how it affects inflation in this country. We've talked about this before, and I showed you a news clip article, I think it was from Fox News, from the port director of Long Beach, Los Angeles. Basically, they blamed the truckers. They said the longshoremen and the ports themselves are not to blame uh, for the fact that we can't get boats offloaded and goods in this country. Well, the Truckers Association did a aha and back at you. And they recorded over a, a month and a half period of time the amount of time that their trucks sat idling at the ports. They literally uh, monitored this on a truck by truck basis. And they announced yesterday that they have waited to be loaded in the ports for over 50, 150 years worth of time. So in other words, in a month and a half, they, the collective amounts of trucks in those ports have waited 150 years worth of time to be loaded. So, you know, boom, back at you. Now it's uh, the Port Authority's chance to whine and, and go blame somebody else. But uh, right now it doesn't look like the truckers are to blame. And of course the longshoremen are gonna take responsibility, but yet there are 687 million cargo containers from China sitting outside the port of Long Beach right now. So we'll see what happens. And uh, Brandy, you should start shopping right now for Christmas 2022, because that's probably when you're gonna be able to get your stuff anyway. Um, yeah, right. it's a good thing I don't like that many people. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay, second thing. We talked about this a month or so ago. Uh, it passed by, this was in the state of California, what they call SB9, SB10. These were the rules that were passed and then signed by the governor that allowed, basically forbade uh, houses now to be single family houses in California. They must be duplexes, or at least that's what we all heard, right? Um, nobody looks at the bill. This is one of these uh, Nancy Pelosi jobs where you sign it first, then you find out what it's about later on. Well, they finally cracked into these things and they found out that what the governor signed didn't tell anybody was actually that it's not two units is the minimum now, it's six units per house. So new houses are gonna have to be built to accommodate six different housing units or anybody who's got an existing house can automatically apply for and get uh, an upgrade to chop up their house into six units. The goal here is for the People's Republic of California to be an independent country in about 40 years with about 240 million people in it. And this is one of the ways that the, the forward thinkers have figured out that they're gonna do that. So uh, needless to say, we finally had a little backlash here in California and there is uh, an interesting system that we got here called the proposition system. And this allows people, ordinary citizens to go out and add or subtract from the state constitution in California, it's called the prop system. And so there is a group, actually they were democratic supporters of our uh, governor here who are upset about these changes and especially not being told what was in the bill before the bill was signed. So they are circulating a proposition to go on next year's ballot that will overturn this and bring us back into a state of primarily single family houses. So we'll see what happens. I'll keep you guys updated. Uh, keep in mind, you know, typically what we see first here in California is, in fact, what happens in these other states. So that's one way to solve the housing crisis. It's unique, uh, but it is, um, it, it is also very unusual. And, uh, you know, to automatically just take everything in the state, say you're now a duplex, even if you don't have two units, you have to be able to allow two families to live there, or in this case, six families. It's going to be an upsetting thing for a lot of folks. So. We'll see what happens. We'll let you know on that. Third thing uh, here, and, and this is uh, this one's a big one. Um, actually, I think you have a graphic for me to use on this. And I'm going to show everybody. I don't know if you guys can see. I'm going to show everybody exactly how this Zillow thing uh, happened. And you guys have been reading. We've been talking about this for over two weeks. Um, a lot of the stuff we've talked about has now been in the press. There was an article from the Los Angeles Times yesterday that uh, discussed what we've been discussing uh, about this. And it, it looks on the surface like Zillow uh, has done some kind of, I don't want to call it a Ponzi scheme, but if we were to do it as private citizens, that's certainly what we would be accused of. 
Um, and, and here's how this scheme worked. And by the way, what we're talking about is Zillow has stopped their iBuyer program and stopped it temporarily as of two weeks ago. And then within a few days now has permanently disabled that program. They're no longer gonna buy properties. They were one of the largest home buyers here in this country in the last 12 months. And um, they did a, essentially what in the stock market would be called a pump and dump scheme. And here's what they did. Uh, let's say that the market value for three houses in a neighborhood is 500,000, <clears> top of the market. They would go out and buy three houses in a neighborhood. And then they would, and you'll show the next graphic, the next one, they, the fourth house they would buy, they would pay 600000 for. They would find somebody who was asking for an exorbitant extra, uh, and maybe you can show that slide actually, an, an exorbitant extra amount of money, and they would pay that market price for that. So as you can see on the graphic, they would pay the $600,000 for that same equivalent house that they have already have three comps in their inventory that they bought for five hundred. dollars now, a public company can value their assets at a current trading value. So immediately what happens, yes, they overpay for one house by 100,000, but the other three houses in theory go up in value by 100,000 on their balance sheet. So they've created a phantom uh, $300,000 gain by overpaying the market. Now, what's happened by doing that is it's caused a lot of people to overpay for houses across the country. Um, it's a real bad thing because at the end of the day, the pump and dump schemes and these kinds of schemes that these guys have perpetrated um, run out of steam when they run out of money. And that's exactly what happened. The investors were like, wait a minute, when are we gonna sell these houses? And as long as you continue to overpay and you continue to froth the market and get prices to go higher and higher, the value on your balance sheet will be great. When it comes time to sell, however, those homes are still only worth 500000 <laughs> or less. And if the normal absorption is, let's say, 10 homes at one time, and then all of a sudden one day you've got to recapitalize your business like Zillow has to do, and they've got to sell 47 homes, uh, pretty soon, you know, those home prices are going to go down. That's exactly what's happened. Uh, in the last two weeks, they have laid off a quarter of their staff. They have permanently stopped their iBuyer business. Um, and they are selling right now. They put 7,000 homes on the market. Uh, they have already taken a $400 million write-off on their balance sheet. They're selling $2.8 billion of inventory. And I predict that they will be on the verge of, if not in bankruptcy, sometime in the next six months. Um, the, the regulators around the country are looking at this because we're seeing and we're sensing some things out there that some of the other iBuyers are doing. Uh, of course, if you are the next door neighbor down the street or across the road and you've had to pay 600000 for a house that was only worth five hundred, and you relied on Zillow telling you that the house was worth six hundred to their own benefit, by the way, um, you have probably a fraud claim, or at least a, a, there's enough of those folks out there that there's probably some class action suit going on or in the, in the process of going on. So um, as always, we'll keep you guys posted. Now, the reason that this is important, the reason I like to take some time and explain how this works to you guys is because obviously, you know, the, the 600,000 house isn't worth five, or maybe it's only worth five. But when you put a bunch of fives on the market, it causes everything to drop. And you've got a situation here now where you're going to have a lot of properties on the market at the same time, and everybody's going to be desperate. Whoever can lower their price quick enough is going to get the cash offers that are out there. The rest of the guys are just going to be established in a new market where the lower price is the norm. So that's what's going to happen. Um, you know, we've talked about the foreclosure crisis, the forbearance crisis, the eviction crisis, and all of those things having an effect in terms of dropping the, the housing price market, the market on generally across the board. I think the thing that's going to hit it sooner and bigger will be the demise of the iBuyer platforms out there and, you know, ultimately what happens with them. So. It's going to be very interesting. Um, you know, there'll be some big winners. There'll be some big losers. 
And as always, we'll keep you guys apprised of what's going on out there.